What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out the dumbest WWE conspiracy theories fans actually believe. I'm very interested in checking this video out to see if I've heard some of these uh conspiracy theories um, from the past or even just recent ones. So, this should be a good one. Looking forward to seeing uh, some of these alleged uh theories that fans I'm pretty sure definitely believed was to be true, only for it to just you know be something of a rumor or as the title says just a theory a game i'm not gonna do that all right we're gonna get into this man <laughs> shout out to those who know the reference man let's get right into it <laughs> oh man wrestling fans are a passionate <laughs> bunch but sometimes that passion <laughs> leads to some pretty wild theories in the wrestling world where the lines between reality and fiction are so often blurred fans have come up with some truly strange ideas uh -huh. today we're diving in to the dumbest wwe conspiracy true. theories that some fans actually believed for a long time there were fans who insisted that the man portraying Kane had changed at various points, and some have even said that his height has changed over time too. Mm. But just like any wrestler, Jacobs has been bulkier and more toned, but I can guarantee that his height has always been the same. Since he took the mask off in 2003, it's been obvious that Glenn Jacobs is the one and only Kane, finally shutting those fans up who insisted that WWE had been swapping out the wrestler. Although, it's unsurprising really that wrestling fans have always been obsessed with the idea that WWE are replacing wrestlers under their noses. And I mean, that was eventually a storyline that they were trying to do with this imposter cane. It was kind of a, a similar storyline what they were trying to do to make it seem as if this person wasn't the real cane, it was somebody else, so... I can get why some people would think that. And it's no surprise because they've done it before. They did it with Doink, and years later, they did it with Sin Cara. Uh -huh. But in the case of the Ultimate Warrior, it felt like a bit more of a stretch. The theory was that Jim Helwig died in the early 90s and was replaced by another wrestler, possibly Kerry Von Erich. When the Ultimate Warrior returned at WrestleMania 8 after several months away, he looked just different enough for the rumors to start. That's crazy. Yes, Kerry Von Erich did look a bit like Jim Helwig, but not that much. The big difference was they had different faces, which should have been a dead giveaway. Yeah. But I suppose this was before the days of HD TV, and the Ultimate Warrior mm. did wear a lot of face paint. Mm -hmm. There was even a theory at the end of the 90s that Vince McMahon himself was a paid actor. In fact, back in the Attitude Era, there were people who thought the entire McMahon family were fictional. I think there was a bit of confusion amongst the new WWF wow. fans at the time as to what was real and what was fake. And it must have been confusing for those first time viewers because- I've never heard of that theory. I, I never even thought to think, oh, these were just paid actors. <laughs> I never thought to What think kind that. of a boss of a billion dollar company does this kind of stuff on TV? And the WWF did have a history of presenting fictional figureheads. Here's the thing. What kind of boss would do that? Vince. He's that kind of boss that would do that, so. Ed, remember Jack Tunney from back in the mid-90s, who was supposedly the president of the Federation? That's when Vince McMahon was supposedly just a lowly commentator. Uh -huh. Although if he had been fictional, then he could never have had that homosexual affair with Shawn Michaels. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm getting confused. That was another mad conspiracy theory. We can blame this one on Bret Hart, <laughs> who started talking smack about Vince and Shawn after the Montreal screw job. He uh... went on the Howard Stern show and insinuated that the men were having a gay relationship together. Jerry, go ahead. All right, Bret Hart, why would Vince McMahon get rid of you and keep Shawn Michaels? Shawn Michaels has been hurt for over a year with back injury, and he had knee surgery and everything. Why would he get rid of you? You were a bigger draw than Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was like a little... What about punk. that? Anything to that? I think that uh, 
I mean, I don't know because you never know what goes on behind closed doors, but I really strongly think there's a link between uh, some kind of a homosexual tie-in between Sean Michaels wow. and Vince McMahon. <laughs> what are you saying there, Brad? Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just saying, you know, I think it came down to, he really surprised that means, me at all, and I think it's a, it's, it's you don't have not any an facts. It's I have not. no facts, but I have a strong hunch wow. that there's a little more to that than the, uh, So there's no fact to that matter. Yeah. There's he no, might not have hurt his back in the ring. Is what is it? Whoa! Whoa! And while we can never truly know whether that was true or false, yeah. we do know that Brett was very, very angry at the time. Having said that, yeah, and, that, and that's one of those type of things where you know you gotta take it with a grain of salt. There, but then again, you never know. <laughs> Look at how Vince looks at Sean here during this promo, and try telling me that he wasn't just a little bit in love i want to find a woman that looks at me like vince used to look at sean and speaking of the montreal screw job believe it or not there are still some fans that believe that the whole thing was a work of fiction mm. and considering how bitter brett was and continues to be about the situation it's clear that it wasn't a storyline nope. but believers in this theory argue that the presence of a documentary crew is a bit too convenient Yes, there was a documentary film crew who were making a documentary about Brett, and they captured everything, the entire situation from their own cameras, including stuff that happened backstage. And the people who believe this theory argue that this was all set up by the WWF to boost their ratings and to create sympathy for Brett. But as anyone that saw Brett in Lonesome Dove will tell you, He's not that good of an actor. And there's the fact that <laughs> Brett ended up in WCW for the worst run of his entire career. If he was still friends with Vince McMahon at the time, he'd have been back in the WWF yeah. like a shot after spending just a week in WCW. Which brings us nicely onto our next dumb conspiracy theory that Vince McMahon sent Vince Russo to WCW in 1999 as a Trojan horse. During the Attitude Era, Russo was a key writer for the WWF and he was known for his edgy and controversial storylines. In 1999, Russo left the WWF and joined WCW to become the company's new lead writer. His booking decisions were so disastrous that many fans believed that he was intentionally trying to sabotage WCW. This led to the conspiracy theory that McMahon had sent Russo to WCW specifically to ruin the company from the inside. But let's be honest, Russo has a massive mouth and there's no way that he would have kept <laughs> this a secret for the last 25 years. Yeah. He does endless shoot interviews and podcast appearances and he would have had plenty of opportunity to reveal the truth in that timescale. Mm -hmm. The actual truth is that Russo needed Vince McMahon in order to keep him in check. And when Russo jumped ship to WCW, yeah. the WWF was on top. They were kicking WCW's ass. McMahon didn't need to employ Russo as a weapon of mass destruction. The company yeah. was already destroying itself at the time. Speaking of competition to WWE, it's hard to believe now, but in 2011, TNA seemed to be right on the edge of competing with WWE. It appeared that finally, Vince McMahon was about to get some much needed competition. And when Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff joined TNA in 2010, it was a big deal, surely. These two men who were so important to the success of WCW could help the company reach the next level. However, their time in TNA was marked by controversial decisions that uh -huh. in the long run did more harm than good and they ended up alienating a lot of the fan base and damaging TNA rather than helping it. Once again, the old Trojan horse theory popped back up as fans started to speculate that the men were employed by WWE uh. in order to sabotage TNA before it got too big for its boots. But to be honest with you, I don't believe that Vince was ever aware of TNA's existence at the time. <laughs> Although with some of the decisions that Bischoff made at the time, even I started to get a little bit suspicious. I mean, this is the guy that came up with the idea of Impact going head to head with Raw. What a dumb idea that was. Another <laughs> bizarre conspiracy theory. Is the yeah, that, yeah. Mm -mm. This is why 
AEW doesn't do that. You would you you would kill your show. You would. This is why they have a specific night. And it works. That's good. Wednesday night, that's cool. It's cool. But you would kill your show trying to go against the raw brand. You would. In the sense of just viewership, people are going to watch Monday Night Raw more. Obviously, it's a, it's a bigger wrestling brand. So, I get it. Not saying that it can't be done. I'm just saying you got to be strategic in what you're trying to do. So, yeah, that, that wasn't the best of moves. Even back then for Monday Night Raw. The idea that moves. Brock Lesnar went into business for himself I've at definitely WrestleMania heard about this 30. One. Streak, which is obviously total nonsense. This was a theory that died out quite quickly because Lesnar... The Undertaker and Vince McMahon have all spoken since about the decision to break the streak, with uh -huh. McMahon admitting that he only decided on the day of WrestleMania uh -huh. to have Lesnar beat the dead man, and all three of them have discussed how controversial they knew this was going to be with the fans. Mm -hmm. And when you actually stop and think about it, it would actually be quite difficult for Lesnar to just change the outcome of the match on the fly as it was in progress. Because Taker probably wouldn't have stayed down and the referee wouldn't necessarily have to count the three. Yes, I'm sure Brock Lesnar can be hot-headed, but he's not stupid and you have to ask <laughs> the question why. What motive would he have had to go into business for himself? Mm -hmm. And the other theory that The Undertaker changed the outcome of the match due to him being injured makes even less sense. WWE have got protocols for handling injuries as they happen in the ring because if anyone knows the inner workings of a pro wrestling match, then it's Mark Calloway. Yeah. Just chalk it up as another dumb theory by us wrestling fans. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be plenty more of them in the future. This was a good one, man. It was that was definitely a good one. Uh, some of these theories I did not even know was a thing. <laughs> some of these rumors that was put out there didn't know this uh, was a thing. But I definitely enjoyed that video, man. Uh, Want to give the proper shout out, of course, to Stunned by Wrestling. Go ahead, like this video if you haven't already. Go ahead, show them some love. Subscribe to their channel. Check out their other videos as well. But uh, comment down below. Let me know some other wrestling theories that you've heard of that you was like, that just don't make a lick of sense. But, you know, people are actually legitimately believing in said theories. Let me know some other ones you can think of if it wasn't in this video. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.